is SWBC Mortgage's Cowboys Cross Talk. Cross Talk. Check this out. Broadcasting live from the Cowboys Club at the Star in Frisco. Brought to you by A Number One Air, the official HVAC and electric partner of the Dallas Cowboys. Blockchain.com, trusted by millions, trusted by America's team. The National Medal of Honor Museum. Join the mission at mohmuseum.org. And by SWBC Mortgage. Customized solutions to help you meet your personal and business goals. Visit SWBC.com. Now, your hosts, Nate Newton and Kevin Gray. Welcome to week five of the National Football League. It is Cowboys Crosstalk on this Wednesday. Live from the Cowboys Club right here at the Star in Frisco. My name is Kevin Gray, 105 through the fan. I got my 105 through the fan cohort, Will Chambers, with me this week. And as always, Nate Newton, good enough to join us here on Cowboys what's Crossing. What's up? What's up? Nate, what's, what's going up? on? And to his right, he is a proud Oklahoma student. I don't know how proud he is of his boys these days, the way they've been playing. But... He is a one two week. Wow, shots fired. Just right, right. one, look, I just one had to week get will do that to you, Tony. Yeah. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. He's a two-time Super Bowl champion. Spent five years, of course, with the Dallas Cowboys. Friend of Cowboys cross star Tony Casillas. Good enough to join us here on this Wednesday night. Tony, what's going on? I'm doing great. Always great to, to see Nate and remind myself why I walk this way. <laughs> uh, <laughs> subtle uh, but wow. it's always it's always great to be just hang out with the big fella and hang out with you yeah. guys. Yeah, yeah. This is awesome. It's good to see you. Yeah, it's great to be here. It's good to great be, to be seen. Yeah, good to see you as always. Was with you last year when we had the Cowboys crosstalk, and now new little setup here for you this, oh, this season. Is, you got the sunset. You got. I mean, this is. Fabulous. Nice and clean sunset. Very relaxed. Yes, very nice. Very nice. And, of course, Cowboys Crosstalk presented by SWBC at SWBC. Customized solutions for individuals and businesses are just a click away. Visit SWBC.com to learn more and start your next adventure. Gentlemen, did not think we would be at this point of the season given the way things started with Rain Dakota Prescott going down with a thumb injury. But here we are, the Cowboys 3-1 and one as they get ready to head to Jerry's hometown where he was born in Los Angeles to play at the house that he and Stan Kroenke built, SoFi Stadium, on Sunday afternoon, 325 right here on the Dallas Cowboys Radio Network, 105 through the fan. Nate, I'll start with you. If I had told you Dak Prescott was going to have a broken thumb at the end of week one, but Cooper Rush, in Rush, we trust as a backup, they would be 3-1 and one heading to Los Angeles on Sunday. What would you say to that? You, you know, Kevin, right now, let's, let's, get that, let's clear the air. There's Mr. Jones, there's Micah Irvin, and there's me. I've never picked the Cowboys to lose. Never, ever. So you asking the wrong cat. I see us sitting where we sit, baby. And I'm, and I'm here to go with that. So, Tony, Will, you better speak to them on that right now. Because uh, you, you knew. Yeah, you I live know. in a different world. I can world. be a little bit more objective because okay, I, don't get, I don't get any paychecks from Jerry anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I just, I, I, I would like some of the scraps. Or, <laughs> but, uh, no. Without, I mean, who would have thought that Cooper Rush would be playing like he is now? The defense is balling better than he did last year. Yes. I mean, who would have thought that yes. they were lead the NFL in sacks? and that all the emergence of all these playmakers. Uh, but it's an amazing story, considering what happened in the first game. Mm -hmm. The Cowboy sky was falling. And it Season was, felt like it was over. It's like, yeah, and, and you go on social media, and I'm like, really? So it's, it's, a great, it's a great problem. I mean, not problem, but it's a great situation to be in because this is exactly what he, what he needed Man, to do. Man, it's just like when Troy went down and Rodney Pete came in and Troy went down and Steve Berline. Went. Man, we going. We, I forgot we, about Rodney Pete. Yeah. <laughs> I did too when he said it. I was like, is he thinking what's, about Steve? Yeah, what's went, his wife's name? Is it, what? <laughs> She's a beautiful woman. Oh, yeah. I don't even no, know. No, I mean, she was an actress. Yeah. No, yeah. I, didn't, I wasn't. Holly Robinson. Know. Yeah. Holly Robinson. Yeah. Yeah. Holly yes. Robinson. Yeah. Yeah. Thank yes. Thank yes. you. Yes. One of my favorite shows, Hanging with Mr. Cooper. Great show. Great right. show. Uh, so, so tell me about that, obviously. We'll get to you in just a second. Hmm? Tell me about that when it comes to when a backup comes in and starts to play well. What does that do for a confidence for a team, knowing that there really hasn't been a drop-off in terms of wins and losses, despite the fact that there is a backup in there playing right we now? We, our team, we like, we, we keep it real. We, you know, we, we patted Jason on the back. We patted Pete on the back. Yeah. Burline, way to go. You got your job with the Panthers now. Mm -hmm. You lead the Cowboy. But Troy was our man. And that's how it rolled. And that's how it rolled. And this is how it should roll. 
Let's roll with this kid. Let's celebrate him. He is the starting quarterback for the Dallas Cowboys. But when Dak, when he's 100% healthy, we roll back with Dak, and we roll back with an offensive coordinator that understands the game a little bit better. Will, as someone who covers this team, what have you seen from the Cowboys? What, what has surprised you most about the fact that this team is 3-1 and one heading to Los Angeles for week five? Just the record uh, at 3-1 and one, with a backup to be still in a position where you haven't really you haven't lost ground. You're still in a great position to be in the race for the division. I think it would be the biggest surprise to me. You know, I, I thought at the beginning of this season that when you look at defenses year to year, they don't translate when in one year you had a lot of it predicated by turnovers. That usually doesn't happen year to year. But I still, despite that, felt a lot of optimism because I think that they've got maybe the best player in professional football and happens to play on their defense. Mm. And with the defense, with him, I thought, okay, they're probably going to be in every game. It's going to be very difficult for them to get blown out because he's going to be able to slow things down and get after the, you know, And we're talking about Michael Parsons, of course, yes. And then... With that, you could still get a lot of turnovers. I don't think you're going to get Trayvon Diggs with double-digit interceptions or, you know, all those touchdowns being scored like they did last year. But I did think that they were going to be competitive in every game just because of the defense. And with that being said, if you are in a position, then if you've got a quarterback that's played, you know, as consistent and as well, you don't have to do a whole lot. It's a 26-ranked offense right now. It hasn't done a whole lot, but it hasn't needed to. Tony, this is a defense that has not allowed more than 20 points so far through four games this year. 20 points per game they have not allowed so far this year. What does this defense remind you of? Who does this defense remind you of when you go back and look at your playing days and how well this team has started to play through its first four games? Well, I think that when you look at their defense, the depth kind of jumps out a little Mm -hmm. bit. I think you're now you're seeing the veracity they're playing. I mean, there's you got one of the the premier defensive players on the front end and one in the back end with Trayvon Diggs. And that's scary. And I think for them, they, they're they very problematic for the other team in multiple areas. And But I see other guys around them are evolving. And I think that you kind of feed off that energy. You know, there's a lot of things happen during the game that plays will open up for you. But it, do you do you make them? But these guys are see, you know, seeing the moment, and they're making plays because of something else that's developing. And I don't think – I mean, I don't know about you. You said, well, you said that you, you thought this team would kind of do what they, they – you know, they, they play good defense this year and get their offense. I didn't think – I was a little skeptical about maybe there would be a drop-off because of the first year under Dan Quinn. Mm-hmm. But the fact that they're playing better than they did last year because of just the depth and guys really, to me – when I see this team, there's a lot of similarities. When we played back in the day, we had like five or six guys rotating and other guys making plays. So, to me, that, there's a lot of similarities when it comes to that, just the big, big play ability. And it's interesting because I thought coming into this year that while maybe the numbers wouldn't be as gaudy from a turnover and from a takeaway standpoint, I felt like this defense could be better because of the understanding they would have under Dan Quinn's scheme. Mm-hmm. And I think you're starting to see that, not just from – some of the players that are flourishing, but some of the surprise players that are first flourishing. Right. And the one guy that comes to mind for me is Donovan Wilson. Yeah. Donovan Wilson over the last three weeks has been a heat-seeking missile. Anything that's in front of him, he is knocking down. And he's a guy that you can tell is developing within Dan Quinn's defense. Nate, when you look at the way that the confidence of this team is playing with right now, what does that speak to from a coaching standpoint, whether it's Mike McCarthy, Dan Quinn, Kellen Moore, Joe Philbin, jo- John Fossil, where do you see the confidence of this team coming from when it comes from a leadership standpoint? Just when we was in training camp, all the guys talked about from the youngest to the oldest, I'm talking about defensively, they, they, they talked about uh, being in this for a second year and starting to understand how to cover each other back. You know, you know, Tony, mm-hmm. a lot of times you shoot a gap and you ain't got a guy covering your back, but now a guy decided to shoot a back and see something, you, you got somebody covering him. So they understand the defense. Uh, Tristan Hill showing up. Mm-hmm. Donovan Wilson has always been a heat-seeking missile, but now it's got a direction to it. Yes. Each week he has gotten better because one reason, he's not missing the tackles. He missing the first week or the second week. He made tackles, and now they put him back in coverage. And he had a couple of nice coverage uh, knockdowns. So this kid understanding, yes, I know my role, 
but how can I get better and flourish in my role? Look, and that's I, what he's doing. I, I think that, and this isn't to take away from how they've played because they've mm. made plays, what you're talking about with the yeah. tackling, all of that is absolutely true. But within the context of the competition they have played as well, there's been one um, thing that a similarity between all four teams. And that has been offensive line that's either not very good or not playing very good. They're going to have that again this weekend with the L.A. Rams. And I think they have made the most out of their opportunity right now against susceptible teams when it comes to pass blocking. And I think that that is a part of it. I think we all look at the defense like they are a good unit and that they're going to be a good unit. But when we look at the 3-1 and one record right now, I think a lot of it is because of the issues that some other teams have also had with their offensive line, and the Cowboys have flat out exploited it. Absolutely, and I think that's what that's a sign of a good team because mm -hmm. I think anytime you go, you do a game plan, you're like, okay, we got we got matchups here, we can win. Sometimes, Nate, that doesn't go accordingly. That's right. You may think that oh, you hear guys, people say, well, the guy's lined up like against a rookie, he's going to explode. Well, sometimes it doesn't doesn't go your way, and. So I think whenever they're able to put things in and, and kind of acknowledge that and see that, um, there's a lot to be said for that. I mean, I, you know, for me, when you look at the offensive line, you, it, I mean, the Cowboys have done really good at finding deep offensive linemen. And you talk, Better than their opposition. Absolutely. Because they were in the same position, really, with yeah. their offensive line. But the point is, is like when you can go in and exploit like they've had some of these matchups and, and get it done – and have the confidence in it, man, it just carries on because, again, sometimes the things don't go accordingly to what you're game planning. And the, 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 thing, yeah. the thing that's amazing is I always, for four weeks, you know, I've been, this, the preseason's over. Whether you're hurt, whether you're healthy, you know your players because it's all been live bullets. So now, this, starting this week, teams should, whether they hurt, or whether you got a young player, you know who these guys are. Your coaches, individual coaches, hey, I know who Nate is now. I know who Will is. I know who Tony is. I know who Kevin is. This is what he can and cannot do. And until he shows us something different, this is how we're going to work our schemes. Now, coming in with these Rams, they know they need to run the ball. Yeah. Because every team is going to say, we ain't giving up. This kid got 16 sacks on them Stafford. They ain't giving up that. Not the way we tackle. And the way we can put a guy out of the game. So they're not going to give it up. These uh, Akers and the other kid, Henderson, they're going to run this rock. Right. Mm -hmm. Even when it hits them against the wall. They have to. Where they're the going to try to run it. Yeah. Right. yeah. The yeah. only improvement we have to do and continue to do is we, you cannot run up in our middle anymore. Where people get us nice on, on the, the edges. edges. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so Saw that last week. We'll see. Time will tell, Will. It's the worst yeah. pass blocking team, uh, depending on the metrics you look at. I think PFF has them as the worst-ranked pass-blocking team. The Rams are, evidenced by the sacks on Stafford. So they're going to have to, even if it's not working, I think that they may still try to do it. They're going to have to hit their head against the wall a couple of times. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, we used, to, remember we used to do that with Philly, spelling our young years yeah. with Jimmy. We, it, it, like, we would run, we wind up running about 30 times for maybe 80, 90 yards. But it saved our gonna, defense. Yeah, mm -hmm. and that's a good point because you got to be able to stay, keep them off the field. You can't, you can't get ahead of yourself. Okay, we're going to abandon the run. We're just going to go to the pass. You got to think of the big picture in the fourth yes. quarter. And so they, those guys did a tremendous job because if you're if they're running at thirty or forty times in that fourth quarter as a defensive lineman, that dude's yeah. getting heavy. Yeah, I'm right. getting tired. So <laughs> yeah. that's where you that, that's where you, you got to understand that maybe it, that's not going to happen. The first, second, third quarter, maybe we we'll only get three, five, you know, three yards per carry. But in the fourth quarter, we're going to extend that baby to five, six, right. six yards per carry, and maybe get a home run. And without stressing your offensive line, Nate, as you can right. attest to, by run blocking as opposed to pass blocking more. Because often. that's the role that we was going down with Tampa. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, so hey, I mean. We are live at Cowboys at the Cowboys Club. It's Cowboys Crosstalk right here on the Dallas Cowboys Radio Network. Will Chambers, Nate Newton, Tony Casillas. Gentlemen, I want you to ponder on this question when we come back from break. We've got two of the premier defensive players in the NFL right now, Aaron Donald and Micah Parsons. Which one has the bigger game on Sunday afternoon? We'll talk about it next live on Cowboys Crosstalk right here on the Dallas Cowboys Radio Network.
back, back to SWBC Mortgage's Cowboys Crosstalk. Cross yeah, check this out. Broadcasting live from the Cowboys Club at the Star in Frisco. Live at the Cowboys Club at the Star in Frisco. It is Cowboys Crosstalk presented by SWBC. Kevin Gray, Will Chambers, Nate Newton, yeah, our yeah. Cowboys legend. Yeah, yeah. Tony Casillas in the building yeah, yeah. on this like in this Wednesday energy, baby. Yeah, yeah, baby. SWBC Mortgage joined the more than 120,000 customers that we've helped to find their happier home. Visit SWCMortgage.com to find a pro today. today. Gentlemen, it is week five of the National Football League. Cowboys 3-1 taking on a Los Angeles Rams team uh, that got the beat them down on Monday Night Football from the San Francisco 49ers. I wanted you guys to ponder on this question because we have two of the premier defensive players in this league today. Aaron Donald coming off his first Super Bowl championship. And, of course, last year, Micah Parsons, the unanimous defensive rookie of the year, looking to win defensive player of the year this year. Tony, I'll start with you on the defensive side or of the Or MVP. Or may, maybe, yeah. maybe MVP the way that yeah. he's been playing so far. Tony, I'll start with you. When you look at Micah Parsons, Aaron Donald, first of all, describe their games the best way that you can and tell me who do you think has the bigger game on Sunday afternoon? Aaron Donald to me is uh, he's so dy dynamic. He's his quick burst, his ability to use his hands and get in space. And, <laughs> God, I think he's ready to go, isn't he? <laughs> yeah, Nate, was, saying, Nate wants to hey, piece Aaron Donald on Sunday. Hey, we Aaron can just Donald do it right there. here, sitting down. We don't have to get up, uh, right? Uh, right, exactly. I'm surprised it's not giving you nightmares on figuring out how oh, you would walk God. that guy. This would be my boy right here. We <laughs> yeah. took care of each other. We needed each other. <laughs> wow. But then he abused me when he needed to. No, but, uh, no. That's all take good. care of him practice no. time. Yeah. 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 We wow. brother-in-law. That, that was my best brother-in-law right there. Yeah. yeah we brother-in-law in a lot of yeah. days. Jimmy knew we was doing it. Yeah, we had to. <laughs> After we became good. Right. Yeah, before that, it was bloody days. It was bloody days before that. that. Not figuratively. Not yeah. related, but yeah. yeah of course. Well, it could be, but. Yeah. But, <laughs> you know, Aaron Donald, he just makes things so effortless. And I just know as a defensive lineman and just other guys and seeing guys play, uh, you just marvel at what he can do because he's so strong. He's so, I mean, he's so fast. You watch him work out. He's a warrior in the, in the weight room. His quickness drills. I never seen anything like that. Yeah. For a guy that big in space. I mean, we're talking about, what, three foot of space? Yes, sir. Total phone booth. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah, I mean, let's go over there. I mean, you can't do iPhone, but you know, people yeah. are home. <laughs> right. If you remember that. Yeah, I remember. So it's just a small, like an elevator. And to be able to do that and to be able to rack and get off, you know, blocks and be able to make plays and just make it, it's almost like when he wants to turn that switch on, he can command it. Yes. And I think I've never seen a guy at the defensive tackle inside the nasty where you have to do all the, the, Bang all the heavy lifting yeah. and stuff. Yeah. And, and still to, be able to get after the quarterback, yeah. sack the quarterback the way that he does. I mean, that's just it's, it's kind of frightening. It's kind of frightening. It, it really is. It's and different Mike, when you're on the edge and it, you got space. Exactly. Talk to me about, Mike, about Micah Parsons. How would you describe oh this game? Oh, my gosh. I, I think a lot. We are talking about this in the break. Uh, the comparison is LT. And LT, I think he's, you know, he's got, he's got some room to go. But his – his ability, his passion, his quickness. I mean, the guy runs a 4-4 and runs people down. And he's always wants, he always wants to be on, a pl on the play. I mean, he never takes any plays off. Have you ever seen that guy take a play off? Never. No. And I've never seen that before, but he's just so quick. His instincts are just amazing. It's hard to imagine that this is his only second year in the league. But it's so instinctual. He, he understands the game. He has a passion. And really, he cares about uh, people around him. Yes. And... That's a very that's an intangible thing to to build a, a characteristic to have. That's because that's not necessarily no. what LT had, right? I mean, well, he was just a he was a little animal. different, man. <laughs> yeah, uh, LT good. LT was a little different, yeah, uh, in di in different ways. But man, that yeah. dude LT, oh my gosh. But what? But one thing they got in common is they both had great coaches. Yeah, he had mm. Belichick as his defensive coordinator. Great early, point. And he got he got Dan Quinn, and but it is a a, a total difference. I want, I want to say this. Y'all can tell I'm an old man now because uh, I'm right there with you. I should not have put on white socks. <laughs> Don't you work? See, yeah. you, you said the quiet even, part. Hold on now. Yeah. You said the quiet part out loud. You didn't even have to say that. You didn't have to acknowledge that. You could have just had your socks. You could have just had your pants. You just had your shoes behind the table. You'd have been all right. At least they're not those. And I love New Balance, but at least they're not the big white ones with the big thick soles on. You didn't even have to say the quiet part. And just above the ankle, too. You're all right. I love you, Daddy. Look, that's all right. Look, just put it behind the table. 
well, then you'd be, you'd be, all, be all good. Uh, so how would Nate Newton and his teammates go about trying to stop Aaron Donald, trying to contain Aaron Donald I'm, on I'm, a Sunday I'm gonna tell afternoon? you something. We got a kid that produces one of our shows, special edition that I do, and it comes on Saturdays and Sundays. He talking about Nate Newton Law. I do things, you know, for, you know, against the defense. I show people how we would scheme up. You cannot scheme him. You, you, and, and see, this, I can scheme Michael Parsons. I couldn't last year, but I can scheme Mike now because mm -hmm. he coming to one of them defensive ends. Mm -hmm. I can scheme him, but you can't scheme what's in the middle. You know, you're going to have a back run up in there? How? It ain't enough space. Right. You, you know, what you going to do? Only thing I can do a lot of times is give him fake reads. A throw a head inside, quick set, quick set outside. Other than that, he controlling you. Tony said it. This is what's amazing. Everybody says he's big. He's 6'1", mm -hmm. 275, 280 on a good day. All but muscle. what he does <laughs> is those workouts. Go, go, oh to the, go, go see the workouts. It's insane. He runs with the wide receivers. He runs with the DBs. He works what, out with The Rock. He yeah. is right. a... Right, there's also that. Yeah. He works he, out with The Rock. He is a... Uh, Born leverage. You talking about dudes that are six five, six four. He's six one, with deceptively long arms. They told us he didn't have long arms, but his hands is always inside. That's his key. That when he gets his hands inside, it's either gonna be a bull rush with unbelievable power and strength, or it's gonna be a bull rush with a snatch. Mm -hmm. And all he wanna do is freeze your feet. And his athleticism, free, yeah. too, my, uh, uh, Nate, is just uh, amazing what he can do. Yes. And the only way that you can really game plan is double or triple team him. Yeah. And that's, I, I mean, yeah. that's all you can <laughs> do. Yeah. Hello, yeah. Connor McGovern. Hello, Ty Libiatis yeah. on Sunday. Hey, absolutely. Let me ask you guys this because you brought Slow it up, down. Nate. How, are you guys surprised that we haven't seen Micah Parsons out, just when I mean, we've seen him on the edge, but haven't seen him on the inside? And that was he, one of the you know, things. He's been on the inside a few times, but not enough like he was last year. Right. You know, my thing is that he's starting to get beat up because they know where he's at. Right. And I've always mm -hmm. told people, put him at that linebacker position and walk him. Put him at that linebacker position and let, let him float stay. around a little bit. Yes. Yes, I mean, Tony, you said it. Man. That makes sense. He's protecting down him a little like bit. An, he this put him somewhere yeah. to be more of a decoy yeah. because when they're sitting there and they see him down around the line of scrimmage in the A or B gap, yeah. they're thinking, oh my, he's lined up. In it. What are we going to yeah. do? Yeah. yeah. So yeah. they got to either slide or, you know, double down on him or make an adjustment. Yes. And he did, so he can, like you say, walk him out, walk him, walk him in and walk him out and have him, you know, stand Crazy to the other side. Along yeah, the yeah, absolutely. Line for sure. For this Cowboys team, along with 15 sacks through four games, Dallas leads the league with 70 pressures per pro football focus. And you saw how the San Francisco 49ers got after Matthew Stafford. He did his patented pick six thing, which he normally does on a week-to-week -week basis. How does Dan Quinn go about attacking a vulnerable offensive line with the playmakers of Micah Parsons, Demarcus Lawrence, Donovan Wilson, Neville Gallimore had a sack on Sunday up the middle as well. Boomer. How, there, you, there you go. So we'll start there. How does Dan Quinn go about attacking this vulnerable offensive First line? First of all, I'd love to play for Dan Quinn. I, that dude, to me, uh, he, he just he exudes passion, and I want to go play for him. You ever yeah. talk to him, Tony? I haven't. You talk but, to him, yeah, man. I, I, I'm open to talk. He's I, very impressive. I, I, yeah. I, I, I can tell, and you can tell the connection he has with his players mm -hmm. and how they respond. Um, you know, I wouldn't change anything. I just continue the game. I mean, you already have a vulnerable offensive line, right? Sure. So just continue what you know. It's kind of like the Giants. The Giants were kind of marred, you know, mirrored what Dallas was trying to do. You know, they were going to try to not give you know, Daniel Jones put him in a passing situation. I mean, they have enough guys to stop the run, load the box up, you know, make them run the football. And then when they start to you know, pass and, you know, Cooper Cup, that's another story. I mean, that's going to be a the test Stafford's for always yeah. looking Tyler for Cooper Hick, Cup. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, they target him, what, 50 was, times? I think it was like 19 times yeah. in this Monday night he game. He got yeah. 42 receptions. But just keep it simple, right, Nate? Yeah. Uh, you don't, you don't, Will, you don't, you don't change anything. Just continue to do what you're, you know, game plan. And listen, listen. You ask what, what, what coach should do, Coach Quinn? Knock on wood. Yeah. I, no, I would go knock on Kellen Moore door and say, all I need for you to do is score first, and mm. they will abandon the run. Absolutely. Mm. Okay, that yes. is uh, – I totally agree with you. Yes. And there's a part of me that wonders, 
Is this the week where they really change it up, or do they need a bye week? You know what's amazing to me is I, I was taking a look at this yesterday where you were just talking about the targets for Cooper Cup. Between he and Tyler Higby, it's almost 100 targets. Allen Robinson has 18. That's mm, crazy. And the times where they had gone to, them, gone to him on Monday night, I thought, man, that's a really tough situation and throwing it to the back of the end zone. Now, I understand you want you know, somebody to make a play, but if you're bringing in a guy with the talent of Allen Robinson, why aren't you trying to use him more considering what type of coverages are going to be around Cooper Cup? And we just haven't seen that yet. And so I thought when you were doing the knock on wood, it's like, let it not be this week where they figure out like <laughs> some different scheme that they're going to do because and finally utilize Allen Robinson, yeah. The, yeah, the, I mean the thing is, see you y'all go by targets. Targets ain't no good. It, it, I mean, he's got nine catches. Yeah. He's got nine catches. Your boy got the big dog. Uh, uh, Cooper Cup. Cooper Cooper yeah. He got he got forty two catches. The other kid got twenty six catches. The yak yardage, this kid got 178. This 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 is Cooper Cup. The other kid got 172. I mean, they catching this ball and they all everything. Robinson, this is what we don't account for. When you see film, if Tony is a up the field guy, which he was in Atlanta, which he was at, at Oklahoma, for you to get him and two gap him, that that's not right. Right. You you paying him? Oh, we're gonna give him ten million dollars a year to two gap when he's up the field guy. He's a penetrator. Yeah. Allen Robinson, they have not figured out how to use him, and they got to hurry up and do that. Let's just hope it's not this week. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but it, you know what? I'm gonna tell you something. It it won't matter if they pass, but if they play action pass or run that ball with any type, because they got cam makers in this indicate, they nice. What is your offensive line gonna hold up? Well, I think I it's mean, the same thing uh, with the Cowboys too. Yeah, but uh, but the Cooper Cup, uh, if if he's catching 10, 12 balls a game, I'm gonna keep throwing him the ball. I know you you want to try to bring other guys, Alvin Robinson. But it's Robinson. not working for them. I understand that it, it's not because right. they can't block and they can't yeah. get in the end zone. Mm -hmm. Right. But. You know, for right now, that's the way that they can move the football right. until there's another opportunity. And, and like I said, I mean, we talked about their offensive line. They're very vulnerable. That's, a, that's the area that you take advantage of. And, and they've got three guys this week on the offensive line that are already on the injury report. Right. So it, it's tough. I, I, you know, Sean McVay is obviously a very smart offensive schematic guy. I, I'm just wondering because as I'm watching these games, I'm like, is Stafford even looking that way? But no, these are really plays that are designed for him to make one or two reads. And those first two seem to be Cup and Higby. If that changes, then that's going to force your defense to have to look more broadly as to how, you know, you're, you're scheming and guarding. But Tony, to your point, you can't do that if you don't have the time. Right. And I think that that's the thing that gets lost in translation. People are like, okay, well, I want you to do this and that. Well, you can only do like one or two reads because you don't <laughs> yeah. have time. And <laughs> That's right. And if that's going to work, then that's what you're going to continue to do until things change. And I, the Cowboys continue to deny what they can't do. I'm a Stafford guy, but he led the league in the Celtics last year. He sure did. He'll throw even it when to he, you. Even when he, was old, even when he was no pressure. This kid. I'm, I'm telling you. He doesn't that, like incompletions, Nate. <laughs> yeah. Does not, not want that work. ball hitting the turf. <laughs> we are live at the Cowboys Club. It is Cowboys Crosstalk on the Dallas Cowboys Radio Network. We were talking about the offensive weapons that the Los Angeles Rams have. Let's talk about the Cowboys weapons and what they've done for the first four weeks of this season. Yes, Cooper Rush, we trust as a backup. Who does he have to get involved on Sunday against Saskia, Jalen Ramsey, and the Los Angeles Rams? We'll talk about it next on the Cowboys Crosstalk on the Dallas Cowboys Radio Network.
Casey Mortgages Cowboys Cross Talk. Cross Talk. Check this out. Broadcasting live from the Cowboys Club at the Star in Frisco. Brought to you by A Number One Air, the official HVAC and electric partner of the Dallas Cowboys. Blockchain.com, trusted by millions, trusted by America's team. The National Medal of Honor Museum. Join the mission at mohmuseum.org. And by SWBC Mortgage. Customized solutions to help you meet your personal and business goals. Visit SWBC.com. Now, your hosts, Nate Newton and Kevin Gray. Live at the Cowboys Club at the Star in Frisco. It is Cowboys Crosstalk presented by SWBC. We are live on the Dallas Cowboys Radio Network. Kevin Gray, Will Chambers of 105 through the fan. Three-time Super Bowl champion, Nate Newton. And former Dallas Cowboy and legend Tony Casillas in the building tonight on this Wednesday. And I appreciate you taking some time out of your day to spend and hang out with us tonight. SWBC PEO, helping to alleviate the HR administrative burden that comes with running a business. Leave the worrying to us. Visit SWBCPEO.com to find out more. Gentlemen, Rams, Cowboys. We talked about the defensive side of the things for the Cowboys heading into Sunday afternoon. The game can be seen on Fox, the A-team of Fox. That would be Greg Olson, Kevin Burkhart, Aaron Andrews will be on the call. And of course, you can hear on the Dallas Cowboys Radio Network, 105 through the fan with the voice of America's team, Brad Chan, Babe Loffenberg, and Christy Scales. Let's talk about the offensive side of the football for the Dallas Cowboys and the emergence of one C.D. Lamb, Sedarian Lamb, has caught 11 passes of 15-plus yards in 2022, tied with Tyreek Hill and A.J. Brown for the most in the NFL. Tony, I'll start with you. What have you seen from your former Oklahoma brethren in C.D. Lamb and what he's done the last few games to give us a lot more confidence in his ability to be that true number one wide receiver in this league? You know, I, I knew that C.D. was a good route runner. But I think that's coming to the forefront, what he does now. And I think that really it, it creates confidence with your quarterback and just knowing where he's going to be and just find, being able to find some space and how strong he is, yards after catch. And I don't think that, you know, he had a drop ball for a touchdown. It would be a touchdown in the New York game. Mm -hmm. But he didn't let that ball. He made one of the remarkable catches with fade route in the end zone. So I think he's really, you know, he's the number one receiver. So with the number one receiver, there's expectations. With expect, expectations, there's big playability. And I think that's what he's able to do. And I think his ability to, Nate, yards after catch and get a, and, and catch like a, like a comeback route right, and then right. take it 20 yards, to me, that's, that's CD. And those stats you just, you just read, I mean, that's kind of sneaky. I mean, it mm -hmm. doesn't seem like he's got that many yardage, but he mm -hmm. does because his yards per catch is amazing. Nate, talk to me about what you see for CD. See, I try to tell all my compadres and the sh many shows that I'm a part of and that I do is everybody, you don't come off the rack, you know, and just be that guy. Some Michael Irvin had to learn to be that guy, you know. So CD Lamb is learning how to be that guy. He still ain't fulfilled all he's gonna be, you know. He, he's beginning to understand the pressure, how to how to you know make those routes. He was a nice guy for the slot. Now he's outside learning those routes and how to beat these double coverages. And it, he would get better, and the competition would get better, and he would get better. It, some people just don't fall into it. I mean, and that's just how it is. Some guys have to develop into it, and he's well on his way to doing that. I think it's rhythm. I was really thinking along the same lines yeah. as Nate here is that, you know, you come into the league and there is, you know, a lot of places he would have gone to, he would have been thrust into being number one right away. Right. He didn't have to do that. You know, he was number two here essentially to Amari Cooper. And I think there's some pressure that comes along with that when you've already shown a little bit of your talent. Now, right. boom, these expectations. And to be honest, he cares a lot. You know, I mean, he really has been working with Dak and he wants to be that guy so bad that initially in the first couple weeks there may be some of those moments where yeah. there's a drop ball here and there once this kid catches some rhythm i think that it's going to be big time you know it, it's not a, the breakaway speed that we see some with some other you know wide receivers in the game but the technician that he can be and a lot of it learning from amari cooper and then right. what he did at oklahoma like what tony was saying i think once he gets more comfortable within the role, because we're only talking four games, mm -hmm. that it could be a very different C.D. <clears throat> Lamb down the stretch than we saw the first 
quarter mile. Nate, give me the matchup that you're looking most forward to seeing on Sunday. We've started to touch on it with C.D. Lamb, the Sask God, Jalen Ramsey, travel with him during Sunday. What's the matchup that you're looking most forward to between the Rams it, and the Cowboys? It's been three matches. It, 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 I call it the death row. You faced the, the Washington football team and those Jonathan Allen and Deron Payne. Mm -hmm. Now you got uh, Gaynor and, 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 and this beast that we've been talking about and Aaron Donald. Then next week you got Philadelphia. So Jordan they're Davis, on death yeah. row right yeah. now. So our interior offense line has to, has to be fixed. And what I mean by that, Tony, they have to understand who is your left guard so this offense can roll and know how to roll. Who does Nate yeah. want to see a left guard? I want to see number 66 there. McGovern, I want to see Connor okay. McGovern. Okay. Uh, because if I was Aaron Donald and I was getting ready to play Peters, I'm, 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 I'm going to make you move your feet, big boy. I'm going to make you move your feet. Mm -hmm. And I don't think his feet is caught up with, with it yet. I just, okay. from what I saw last week. Aaron Donald, he, 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 he creates problems for anyone. Yes. Zach Martin, uh, you know, with Tyler Tyler Beyond, yeah, any, yeah. any, yeah. anyone, any, yeah. all future Hall of Famer. I mean, that's that's who he is. I mean, it's, he's that type of player. And I think that, you know, going to a game like this, you can only game plan for Aaron Donald for sure. so much. And then after a while, he gets single block. You just got to try, hopefully, do your job. Like Jimmy used to. I mean, unless you're Reg, <laughs> unless you're, unless Reggie White's lined up over right. you, right? Yeah, man. He's just throwing everybody around oh anytime like he wants pumping, to. You know. I, yeah, yeah, I love. I laugh because Tony's telling the truth. It's, it's like a, Jerome Brown. Jimmy used to come to me and personally say, hey, man, we're going to try to send a fullback through there every now and then. <laughs> we're gonna we, yeah, we're going to try to win. The already in his voice. I look Yeah, we're going to try to win. It's like, where in the hell is yeah. a fullback? But, right. Right. <laughs> but then he'll say, but, Nate, 75% of this time, you gonna, you have to deal. We can turn the protection, but you have to deal with him. Yeah. And so I – you know, all week long, I just tell my wife at the time, like, babe, I, I don't want to talk about it. Don't ask me about the game. <laughs> yeah. You know, Look, I know Reggie yeah. and Jerome over yeah. there. I ain't, I ain't trying. Look, Dang, I already know. I, yeah. I already know. So what, I, is, so what advice are you giving Conor McGovern, Tyler Biotis? What are you giving those? Because we know what Zach Martin is. He's a Hall of Famer on his way to Canton as a right guard. But what are you telling Conor McGovern and Tyler Biotis about what they've got to deal with when turns of Aaron Donald on Sunday? You. There's and no, the entire interior, I should say, there's the no as well. such thing as a perfect game. And I, I think Tony Wise. Tony Wise, like, Nate, perfect set, perfect aiming of the head, perfect, pl perfect uh, placement of the mm -hmm. hands. And after that, fight. Do not give up on – I used to be so tired after playing Jerome Brown or – uh, 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 what's the kid from Minnesota? John, uh, John Randall. John I used Randall. to be oh so my. tired. Be like, why are you, are you going home there? You ain't going to party with his name? No. <laughs> no, I'm going like home. I'm beat. <laughs> I'm, because you will have no playoff. Because you don't know when this stud is going to crank up. Right. So you, 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 every play, you, you, you're perfect. You're setting perfect. You're trying to punch. You're trying to get, you do not know when this guy going to turn it on. Yeah. Because you cannot stop him if he decides to go five or six plays in a row wide open. You're going to lose three of them. <laughs> Unless we got the perfect play call, and Norv used yeah. to save us with that lead draw. John that Randall was, a, was a, the best smack talker, wasn't yeah, he? I mean, yes, that dude, he was. Talk, he's a Hall of Famer. But you know what? It, you know, those guys that we're referring to, Bidosh and, and yeah. McGovern, you just got to play. Just trust what you're doing. doing yes. Okay. Your technique and what you've been doing, don't. Don't get caught up in who you're playing against. You, you know, it, it, you know. Nate referred to, he's not going to beat you. Well, I don't want to put that out there, but I, I just, my he's not going to beat you every time. Now. But he's not my gonna point beat you every is, time. is that there's a reason why you're in the National Football League. Sure, thank you. Okay, yeah. I mean, Aaron Donald's special, but you're kind of special too because you you're in the league. I like right. that. You're so starting. just trust what you're doing. Don't overthink it. Don't get intimidated. I mean, you know the guy. He does that to everyone. Just play your game and, and trust what you're doing. That's all you can do. Will, before we go to break quickly here, give me an X factor on Sunday offensively you're looking for. Tony Pollard, and this is a classic radio host talking head like, let's think about somebody <laughs> outside. But honestly, this is a wounded, like, dangerous animal in the L.A. Rams right now. You know, they're a very good team, and they are at the brink and losing back-to-back -back games. They're at home. 
This is going to be a really tough game, despite, I think, the matchup really favoring the Cowboys with the offensive line of the Rams. It is Cowboys Crosstalk live at the Cowboys Club here at the Star in Frisco on the Dallas Cowboys Radio Network. Coming up next, we're going to get the predictions from these gentlemen, and we're going to catch up with Tony Casillas, see what he's doing these days out here in the DFW area. It's Cowboys Crosstalk live on the Dallas Cowboys Radio Network. Back to SWBC Mortgage's Cowboys Crosstalk. Cross yeah, Broadcasting live from the Cowboys Club at the Star in Frisco. Final segment here on Cowboys Crosstalk live on the Dallas Cowboys Radio Network presented by SWBC Kevin Gray. 105 through the fans, Will Chambers, three-time Super Bowl champion Nate Newton and our right, Cowboys buddy. legend Tony Casillas joining us right here on this Wednesday night. Let's thank one of our proud partners, Liberty Tax, a proud partner of the Dallas Cowboys. Schedule an appointment today at libertytax.com slash cowboys. It is prediction time, gentlemen, as uh, Tony gets in his uh, his pictures. And I was taking a... His, I, I, I like that look, the white socks. See, you set them out yeah. with shoes again, man. We covered that earlier, man. Well, let he the, brought it to our attention. Yeah, I'm saying. sorry, I'm no. just tweeted let out. Let the shoes like, behind, but nah, White he's, socks, man. He's, he's it's a style. He's, he's, is, that the, is that what that is, the Michael Jackson look? <laughs> All right, well, here oh, we go. No, we're some like a little Miami Beach. Oh. <laughs> you tucked that to somewhere else. A little Miami Vice, Nate. Is that what that was? No, that's Miami Vice. This is Miami Beach old man style. Just don't wear those with sandals. I need to say, put on my sandals. Yeah, don't do that. Just don't do that. Don't do that. Before before we get into prediction time, Tony, tell us about what's going on with you. This is epic. In fact, we just had you on our show with myself and Chris Arnold not too long ago. You was out in Fayetteville, I believe, with your daughter. And, yeah. Uh, I, she's the senior out there this way. These so days. it's amazing how old you get and how and you have kids. It, it speeds it up, the whole process. So I went to back-to-back -back parents weekend, one at Arkansas and one at Oklahoma. And I tell you what, that will test your <laughs> test your, your, right. your youth your endurance or lack of youth. You, uh -huh. And... You know, we tried to stay up with them, but uh, 
That's great. I and mean, I got an older son that went to UT. He's doing great. Lives in Austin, the electrical engineer, trying to persuade and trying to put a little pressure on them to, to make me a, a grandpa. I don't know. I'm not, I don't know if I want to be a pawpaw. But anyway, that's enough of that. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I try to stay active. I have a podcast. I do. I, I do. A, try to do as much as I can on social media. Uh, you can follow me at TC Tony Casillas and, yes. and Twitter TC mm -hmm. Casillas. I try to stay up and kind of in. I would say in the know as far as you stay uh, involved in the game. Yeah, yeah. I, I try to, and then uh, you know, I, I I've been doing stuff on and off the last six, seven years in the media, and then uh, actually was uh, I was in the process of writing a book, an autobiography. Uh, Congratulations! Yeah, and that's kind of kind of put on the shelf a little bit, but it, the name of it's Brown in Oklahoma. So kind of like growing up as a minority uh, in Oklahoma, a Hispanic. Uh, some of the tr trials and tribulations sure. that you face and overcome and the story, you know, some of the, you know, the experiences uh, on the way. Um, but, yeah, that's been keeping me pretty busy. I think uh, it, what we did in the 90s, you know, I'm glad that Jerry keeps that thread together, so to speak, yeah. still. Uh, it, but for us guys to be able to get back and reminisce about what we used to do and, you know, the history that we made, I mean, that's a special group, man. And I think that that's – when you talk to the fans and you talk to the, the Cowboy Nation, you know how special that is. So you just really want this generation of Cowboys to have that experience. The fans have had that experience. I mean, this is an amazing place. But, um, yeah, I mean, it's a great area to still live, an area to live in. And uh, I couldn't think of a better place to live in Dallas. But, uh, yeah, I've been, I've been staying uh, busy trying to uh, – keep the weight off I know that's kind of a tough and when I, I say that in a light way sure. trying to because I know as a player once you play you know Nate how many years you play in the league oh man about 14 so 14 yeah. I played 12 so as you get older you try to kind of fight father time and sure. it's going to catch up with you it catches up with you but just try to stay active and kind of be an advocate to to you know keep yourself healthy and wellness and all that but uh I mean, that's a lot. It's a mouthful. Well, I do a lot of different things. Well, here's the completion of your, of your book, obviously. That's a, <coughs> sure an incredible yeah. endeavor. So. Well, and, and let me say this, too, because, you know, as somebody that's been able to, well, work with Nate for a while and then right. talk to Tony a number of times, the, the great part about you guys and your perspective is not only what you're following right now with the Cowboys and with the NFL, but to really get a good understanding as to what greatness is because I think there's a great mystery around the Cowboys right now and over the last 10 years and trying to understand why. Why hasn't it happened? You know, we're all trying to figure it right. out, you know, because there have been a number of teams that you're like, man, that's about as good as they mm -hmm. come in professional football, but for whatever reason, have not gotten to an NFC championship game. But you guys, having lived it, and gone through it and done it as a Dallas Cowboy gives us a perspective that it's it's not easy to find. Well, I mean, there's two questions as a former player that you get asked all the time. One is, what are you doing now? And two is, well, what's, what's wrong with, you know, what's, what's the problem? with the Cowboys? Yeah. And I'm thinking, you know, I wish I knew that answer. Uh, and I think that you, a lot of, there's almost, there's a lot of expectation. You know, they have things in place to kind of for the long long haul and I think you know for us what was so special is that we were built for the long for the longevity when I say longevity I mean like five or six you know we probably could have won four Super Bowls in that one decade but that's what we were built for sure and so that's a special moment so you know that's that's probably the question that I get asked all the time and I'm like I, I wish I could tell you give you I had a you know the crystal ball and give you the answer but that's one thing about Nate, man, I love this guy. I mean, I, I, I you know, it, it's when we see each other, we're older, but it's like right. going back and we pick up where we left off because mm -hmm. we've got so many great memories that they're intimate memories that just right. we have. But to be able to take people on that ride, the fans, and experience that, man, that's what we want, man. We want fans to be able to experience what we experienced back in the day. I, that's so true about Nate because the fact, like I said right when we saw each other here today, Nate and I working together – that moment that he had with Michael Irvin in the, during the preseason game, I'm like, I've been, I've been on the other side of that, too. I know exactly what Nate's like. Well, 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 well. What, what, uh, first off, 
Yeah. I know exactly what was going on. I was immediately laughing. Yeah. <laughs> Got about a minute and a half, gentlemen. Give me predictions on Sunday. Start with Will. What are you looking for on Sunday, score-wise? 2017 Rams, and the only reason being is that this is the defending world champion. They've lost the game last week, and they're at home. It's just too dangerous. I think both teams will play uh, well, but I think it'll be the Rams. I know you're picking the Cowboys, so I don't even have to worry yeah. about you. You're, you're picking the, what right. are you picking on Sunday? Uh, I'm going to have to pick it back off, Will. I think okay. that the Rams, I'm going to say 24. Oh, Tony. <laughs> it's going to be a tight game, 24-21, but okay. a, a lot's yeah. going to be based off how well they how they expose their offensive line and obviously the playmakers on defense. It's it's going to be a great test for the Cowboys. The Cowboys defense is going to give them a chance on Sunday, but I think the Rams are just a little bit better this week around, and I'm I'm ready for Rain Dakota Prescott to come now back. We ain't going to give y'all nothing to eat tonight. None of y'all. <laughs> that's all right. That's all right. No, gotta, th this is like this is the NFL. This is just being yeah, like, look, hey, look, we're trying to be objective here. We're just trying to do our job here. <laughs> I'm being objective. Y'all can't eat. <laughs> <laughs> Tony Casillas, thank you so much hey, for your time. This is my pleasure, man. I love it. We love appreciate you joining us here thank you. on always Cowboys Cross Talk. Nate, as always, good to see you once again. Looking forward yeah. to doing it next week. Will Chambers, as always, good to see you, my friend. We'll be doing I'll this. I'll see you this weekend. I'm sure I'll see you this weekend, yes. for sure. It has been the Cowboys Cross Talk live yeah. at the Cowboys Club here on the Dallas Cowboys Radio Network. Again, thanks to our guest, Tony Casillas, for joining us this evening. My name is Kevin Gray of 105.3 The Fan. Be sure to watch the Cowboys on Sunday on Fox and, of course, live on the Dallas Cowboys Radio Network, 105.3 The Fan. Brad Shan, Babe Loffenberg, Christy Scales, they'll have you all covered for the game day on Sunday. Y'all have a good night. This is Cowboys Cross on live on the Dallas Cowboys Radio Network.